Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Johnny Chivers. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the differences between AWS Glue and AWS EMR, when you should use which service and why. It's a question that comes up in the comments quite a lot. Why would I use AWS Glue when I have EMR? When should I use AWS EMR over AWS Glue ETL? So to understand that, we're gonna take a quick look at what EMR is, then we'll take a quick look at what Glue ETL is, and then we'll look at the differences between the two and when you should use which one and why. So firstly, what's EMR? EMR stands for Elastic Map Reduce, which is now just called EMR by AWS. It's a big data platform, and that's the key. It's a big data platform. It actually encapsulates lots of big data technologies that need clustered computing. So clustered computing is where we have one or more servers clustered together, and we put software on them that lets us utilize those engines to look at big data. AWS EMR covers a whole range of services. For example, Apache Spark is there, Pig is there, Hive is there, HBS is there, Presto is there. And that's just some examples. There are more, I'll leave a link in the description and you can go read. It's a big data platform that you can use to look at data, interrogate data, extract data, transform data, load data, run ML queries across it if you want. AWS Glue is a serverless extract, transform and load service. So it's serverless, so we don't have to manage anything. And it's for extract, transforming and loading. So it's when we want to ETL data. And that's the first fundamental difference. It's ETL tool. AWS look after all the compute for us, but under the hood, it's Apache Spark running on containerized EMR. You don't have to know anything about it. AWS look after everything for us. At the fundamental level that we're interested in, all we do is type some ETL code in PySpark or Scala, and AWS provision all the other compute resources for us, and it runs that script that we've created against the data. So it's a hands-off service used for ETL. So when should I use EMR and when should I use AWS Glue? As we've already said, AWS Glue is a serverless ETL solution. So at its first principle level, we should only use Glue when we're doing ETL. Side note, there are other things AWS Glue can do, like ML learning before everyone goes mad in the comments, but we're looking at this at first principles. Really, Glue is an ETL tool. So if you're doing ETL, then you can consider Glue. EMR also has Apache Spark running. So it can also be used for ETL. But why would I choose Glue over EMR? EMR, although it's a managed service by AWS, it still requires some fundamental understanding of cluster computing. So EMR provisions the nodes we need for cluster computing. It installs the software that provides the engines that we need to carry out our big data transformations but you still need to know how cluster computing works really. You probably need an administrator. You have to create ETL code, then place that onto the cluster, then point your data sources at it via some sort of catalog, and then you still have to run it. That means that there's a lot of overhead to EMR. There's a lot of like infrastructure cost to EMR. Glue on the other hand is much simpler. You've got a Glue data catalog that you register some data in. You create some jobs using Scala or PySpark, and then AWS takes over and manages everything for us. We don't need to concern ourselves with underlying uh, clusters or nodes, or even the Apache Spark engine itself, really, at that kind of detailed level. AWS are looking after this for us. Therefore, if you're doing anything other than ETL with big data, such as machine learning algorithms, or you want to use some sort of Presto engine and you don't want to go near Athena, you're forced on the EMR. AWS Glue is strictly for ETL at its first principle level. However, there is an extra cost associated with AWS Glue compared to EMR. As AWS are managing the cluster for us, the compute, and all we're really doing is firing some code at it, there is an overhead cost. And this is about 20 to 40% more than if you were to carry out the same task using EMR. It depends on your use case, depends on your data, depends on the runtime. But from my experience, it's anywhere between 20 and 40%. And you may say, hey, that's quite a high overhead to have the privilege of glue. But where I find you make the money back is in two places. Firstly, in the real world, including companies that I've worked for, provision EMR clusters for the entire working week. And that's because of the amount of overhead that goes in, especially in enterprise businesses, to making that EMR cluster secure. You don't tear it up and bring it down all the time. 
That means that there's a lot of idle time that that cluster you're paying for and it's not actually performing the tasks. AWS Glue, you only pay for what you use by the second. So you're only actually paying when you're computing. And that is where the first cost saving comes in. Yes, you may be paying 20 to 40% more, but you're not actually using the EMR cluster 80% of the time. Therefore, Glue works out cheaper. And then there's the human resource element of cost that comes into play with an EMR cluster. Although AWS provision the nodes, put it in a cluster and install the software that we need onto it, there's still quite a lot of admin to fully run an EMR cluster at production level. You really do need a Hadoop kind of infrastructure specialist and admin. And this obviously costs a fair amount of money. Therefore, usually in terms of just pure ETL, it can work out cheaper to use AWS Glue because you no longer need that resource. Of course, AWS EMR has its place with ETL. AWS Glue can provision 100 DPU units. That gives you 16 gig of RAM per unit. So you have 1600 gigabits of RAM at max capacity and you get four CPUs per one DPU. So you can actually have up to them 400 CPUs. Therefore, if you have ETL transformations that are gonna need more than 400 CPUs and 1600 gigabits of RAM, you're gonna to have to go to EMR. And at that stage, you're probably gonna need a Hadoop admin anyway because your code's gonna be that complex. And it really makes sense to move the EMR over Glue. EMR also makes sense still for machine learning. If you've got complex machine learning algorithms, it's a lot easier to use EMR Studio and spin up an EMR cluster and carry out ML than do any of that in Glue. Even though Glue does have ML algorithms now in built, personal experience, EMR is still the go-to tool. And finally, if you're used to using your cluster to interrogate data, like look at it like a data analyst, then you're still gonna need EMR to do that. AWS Glue isn't really good for looking at data because you have to create jobs. You can use AWS Athena for this as serverless, but traditionally a lot of enterprise customers like to run their own cluster for this purpose and put security around it like Ranger. You're gonna be into the world of EMR to do that using something like Hue and the Presto engine or Hive, for example. And those tools are only available on EMR. So in summary, when should you use AWS Glue? You should use AWS Glue when you have an ETL job that you know is going to take minutes, hours, maybe even a couple of hours, and you don't want the overhead of provisioning an EMR cluster. And when should you use EMR? When you need a big data platform to do big data calculations that can't be handled by AWS Glue. So that's everything for today, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. There's a link to my website below where I make all this information for free as well. And until next time, thanks for watching.